Henry and his mopey mood. Henry was bored. The deep grey sky sat heavily on his head, and the rain pressed him onto the wet earth. Miserable was the word that came to his mind. Mopey and miserable. Why, oh why, is the sky so glum? he pondered. Why, oh why, am I slip sliding over mud? he mused. In fact, why, oh why, should there be such a day as this? he grumbled to himself. He frowned and slumped like a sack of potatoes in a cold, dank cellar. Then his ear twitched. Someone was singing. It was a mischievous, bristly sound, brimming with energy and resolve. He peeped out of the corner of his very depressed eye and saw Duck. Not a waddling as ducks do, but a wiggling as ducks don't. He looked more carefully and noticed to his surprise that Duck had only one webbed foot and not two. Somehow this didn't seem to deter Duck. On the contrary, it appeared to make her more determined and more insistent that she would go where she wished and nothing would prevent her. As she wiggled, she sang. I'm a one web wonder, just you see, wiggling over the land or sea. Nothing too immense for feisty old me. However great the difficulty. Hmm. Henry huffed irritably about the noise. But then he spied out of his other very grumpy eye Rabbit, who wasn't hopping as rabbits do, but wobbling. As rabbits don't. He looked more carefully and noticed to his surprise that Rabbit had only three legs and not four. However, what held his attention more was the oak leaf gripped between Rabbit's teeth. A gypsy moth caterpillar sat there, tucking into a delicious feast. Rabbit's challenge was to get Caterpillar safely back home before she'd eaten the entire leaf. He had found her, lost and far from her family. She had been captured by Mouse, who had dropped her when a tastier treat had presented itself. Rabbit, ever kind and thoughtful, was on a rescue mission. Hmm... Henry refused to think any more about Rabbit's wonderful example and curled up into a tight ball as protection from the cruel world. It was not long before another cacophonous sound surged down his spiky spikes and grated into his little ears, quite deafening him. He uncurled just a hint and peeped just a minuscule. It was Crow, who was not cawing as crows do, but screeching as crows don't. He looked more carefully and realised that Crow had a damaged wing and was in some considerable pain. However, this was not the reason for the deafening, screeching sound that Crow was making. 
It was not a cry of pain, much more a cry of alert. Because Crow had noticed that Hungry Owl had been perched on a high branch for some time and had been particularly interested in Henry. Owl had babies to feed and unusually was out and about amongst the sunbeams. Crow was warning Henry, who, with amazing haste, scuttled to cover just in the nick of time. He watched Crow from his blessed place of safety, hobbling along the ground, managing awkward lopsided moments of flight onto a log and then a branch. She was now cawing gleefully, despite her broken wing, making light of her difficulties and glad of her good deed for the morning. Hmm. Henry began to feel prickly inside as well as out, as though troubling thoughts were needling him, disturbing his mopey mood. Doug had brought him music despite her struggles. Rabbit had been a hero rescuer for Caterpillar, and Crow had saved his life. Like a sun bursting over the horizon on a new day, Henry had the chance to consider coming out of his glumness. At first, he experimented with smiling. <laughs> then, he tried a laugh. <laughs> After that, he found himself giggling. <laughs> Worm was watching this performance, somewhat sa fascinated. When Henry started dancing, Worm chuckled and burrowed down into the soft earth with a happy heart. Never again, resolved Henry, will I ever wallow in misery. Life is too short. The challenge is too great. Courage is all around. The path to happiness is in overcoming moods and muddles and mopey places and thinking about how to help others and live kindly. Oh, Henry felt like a whole new person that day, as though he had glimpsed a better horizon and was determined to never let it slip from his sight. <laughs>